Hello, hello everyone. Today I am checking out the shop that's called Unhinged Tether. Joined in September 2020, so that's about seven months ago. And that 556 designs, Unhinged Tether is a beast. Holy moly, 556 designs, that's pretty good. So in this, in this episode here of the podcast, I'm going to be looking through uh, tips and tricks uh, although i will say right out of the gates full spoiler alert you're doing a lot of things right here so i've got just a couple tweaks i think that can help maybe make the shop uh you know increase its chances of getting some more eyeballs and possibly some more sales let's go <music> Hey there guys, we've got a sponsor for this podcast and it's my own other channel. So this is my second YouTube channel that I started up recently. It's called Crafty Stacks. So if you like hearing from me, if you want to hear me kind of ramble on about, you know, artist resources, this hopefully will be a good uh, a good opportunity. Uh, I, I go real deep dive into some of the online things. Like for example, I do a deep dive on horror comics and I do a deep dive on photoshop things like where you can go to get resources for artists so anyway just wanted to throw that out there if you're interested in my sister channel it's my my videos it's all me uh but it's called crafty stacks and it's uh growing like gangbusters so feel free to jump on board and hit the subscribe button okay so some of this feedback that i'm going to provide i admit is pretty picky and so the re and so that's actually a good thing because it means you're doing a lot of things right in my opinion anyway uh, first piece of really picky thing uh, picky advice here would just be your profile picture seems fuzzy for some reason and I've got a pretty big monitor up so if you're somebody's looking at this either on a you know bigger screen monitor you may want to get a higher resolution thummy just for your actual um, banner picture here on Redbubble but I do like the idea though I love your shop like overall you've got a featured collection here of feminism which is great and again, the reason I say that, that it's great, just to be more specific, is that people buy designs because they're emotionally invested in the design. So it's things they really like, it's things they really don't like, it's things they're really proud of. That's why they want to show it off on a t-shirt or put it up in their house somewhere. Coffee mug, art print, that sort of thing. So I love your collections here. You've got more than just what it is, you've got a bit of a seller in here. So it's like the amazing human body instead of just pictures of bones right you've got you know um feminism spooky see i don't know what spooky is Ooh, now i want to click on this right so i'm going to click on spooky because you know you could have just said skulls lips but no like you you're thinking of the emotion behind it so like this is a great great design i love skulls this is a really good really good looking shop here so yeah, so definitely just look at your collections and see if there's things that you can change uh, to make it even more engaging. So things like gr like growing things, for example, um, when I click on that, these are like flowers and mushrooms, right? I like that. Like, like I guess my, my feedback to you is like, don't change that like don't change it to flowers because what it does is it, it triggers the human brain to want to click on it and find out what it is fan art so here we've got fan art i would always caution if you're going to do any sort of fan art to watch out for trademarked stuff it looks like you're walking up to the line but not over the line which is fine by me Yeah, so I'm not seeing anything here that's like just blatantly, you know, um, like this is this is a great, that's a great example here is where it says Paula, Adam, Bonnie, Tony, Kent. Somebody somewhere knows what that means, so you're not infringing on a trademark. So um, I know sometimes people, this is a hot topic with trademarks. People go, well, you know, is this trademarked? Is that trademarked? Like something like Be More Dolly, like because it's Dolly Parton's face on it, that I would be nervous about, but that's just me, right? I just keep to all public domain stuff. I just keep to all text designs. But, you know, something to think about is as you continue to grow, the bigger your store is going to get, the more risky it is to start uploading designs that have any sort of trademarked piece to it. Like these are Fisher-Price 
you know, designs. And so if, if they're trademarked and I don't know that they are, you know, that could be a problem a year from now, two years from now, that sort of thing. So anyway, just something to keep in mind because I would hate for you to do all this work and then have the shop disappear someday. Okay. So let's check out what else we've got down here. I'm going to scroll on down to this design here, the fabulous woman essential t-shirt. I love, love, love vintage comic book stuff. And so to me, this is a great design and you would want to probably expand on this. So what I would recommend is you could easily remove the text out of this design and you could come up with 40, 50, different sayings that go inside here about women, about strong women, about whatever women, and you could have the same vintage with a circle. This is such a strong looking design, regardless of the text. This is such a strong looking design. I would recommend that you make variants of it and variants are easy. A lot of people will ask me like, why do you like, how can you upload 40 designs in a day? And it's like, well, I'm just switching out the text and then it's like, I just upload 40. So it's like, it takes me 40 minutes to make 40 designs because I'm just punching in new text, right? Maybe a bit more because you've got different fonts here, but that's what I would recommend. Like take something that's like this and you can make variants off of them. Now you can make a whole collection of retro, retro progressive women. And it's all funny sayings with this vintage artwork. Ooh, that is, that is a nice selling like that is a nice selling feature. Somebody goes into that collection and they go, wow, okay, I'm excited about that. So this is sort of an unorthodox piece of advice and this may not speak to you. So no hard feelings if that's the case. Again, these are just suggestions. One thing you may want to do because you have your featured collection as feminism is you may want to set up a Facebook page and you can call it, you know, Unhinged Heather. You can make it your store name or this is another idea is you do a Facebook page about feminism. So you, you do like a Facebook group and then you say, my name's Unhinged Heather. I run this group. And then you have people can upload articles and they can get angry about stuff and they can have protests and they can celebrate and it's all emotion. So I, I, I don't mean any of that lightly. Like people get angry about things or people get happy about things. And then you say, Hey, running this Facebook group, you know, has been the joy of my life and here's my shop if you're interested in supporting my endeavor. And so you're not asked, it's not charity, but what'll happen is you'll make a connection with people that are like-minded. So if you're looking for a way to connect with other feminists, one option is to set up something on Facebook, either a Facebook page and the Facebook page would be you, like your shop, or you set up a group and then people will join the group and then they have no idea about your shop, but they're joining the group because they're angry at so-and-so or because they're celebrating so-and-so. And then they go, and then you say, by the way, I've got, you know, cause you know, what if, just what if, let's just brainstorm for a second. Let's just daydream for a second. What if you had uh, 2000 people on that group and then uh, Easter's coming up. So you did like a feminist Easter funny shirt and you posted it. It's like somebody's going to be excited about it because they like you, they like the group, the emotion, you're riding the emotions of the group to help sell products. That's an, it's an idea. And again, it doesn't speak. Some people might go, Oh, I'm not setting up a Facebook group, but other people are like, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. So again, just an idea. The last piece of advice, I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom of the store here. You've got 556 designs. And as I scroll on down to the very bottom, we've got 294 favorited. So some people go, well, it's not very many. I look at it and go, okay, there's 294 people that have told you by favoring, favoriting the design that they like it. So what I would recommend you do is you go up to the top, you log into your account, and then you look at your account and you find out who's favorited. So you can go into an activities feed at the top. That's one option. You can see so-and-so favorited your design, or you can just go into manage portfolio and you can see all the designs laid out and it'll tell you the number of favorites, at least when it's working. Sometimes the favorites button um, doesn't work in that screen. But if you look at who's favoriting your designs, that's like 
it's like a sale, but just without money. So somebody's gone in and gone, oh, I like this, click, I've liked this, click. And they've sort of voted up on it and it sits in their collection. So if you've got, for example, a hundred people favoriting your Labyrinth hand classic t-shirt, then the universe is telling you to make more of those. Even though no one maybe has bought it yet, it's at least a, it's a hint. It's a whisper in the dark. Someone saying to you, hey, make more of these. Um, I got to be honest with you, your shop looks really good. You've got really good looking collections. You've got a featured collection. Your thumbnails look good. Your products all look to be properly like, like I don't see any like weird errors here where something's way off. Your texts are actually pretty good because you've got different professional looking texts. Like this one, for example, would probably be the most amateur looking just because it's like regular Cooper font. But it's, again, it's personal preference. So you may want to just have that picture and 10 different types of fonts, white font, black font, uh, sans font, sans serifs font, uh, something like this font, like this, you know, tropical tiki font. You can have a whole bunch of different stuff in one design and it's a, qu it's a quick way to scale up similar designs. So usually everything I upload, if it's changeable, I have like three, four, five, six of the same thing. So this one, I would do a white one on black. And then I would do a black one on white. And then I'd have this retro one. And then I would have like a hot pink one. And I'd have a hot blue one. Like it's just an idea. And then remove Sulani because it's just a dude with a surfboard. This could be Hawaii. How many places are there in Hawaii? There's 50 cities, oh, cities, towns, 50 towns in Hawaii that you could definitely, 50 destinations, let's say in Hawaii. What about California? What about anywhere on earth that has palm trees and a guy surfing. So there's a bunch of different, like this one here, you could scale up and have an entire collection and have really, really specific locations. Like you could have visit Makaha, which is like a tiny little town on the west side of Oahu in Hawaii. Like I know where Makaha is. I've stayed there a bunch of times. I love it. But that's why I would buy that because I go, wow, they have Makaha on a, on a, on a bag here or a t-shirt. So that's an idea. You take a really nice design, remove the font, and then just start punching in locations. Boom, boom, boom. It's a bit boring. I'll be honest with you. Cause you go up to about a hundred and you go to Jesus, like it's just a sweatshop. But if you want to pound out a lot of quick designs, if you have a great base design, that's an idea. Okay, so lots of tips and tricks there. Hope you guys found this helpful. As always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I absolutely love hearing from you in the comment sections. And yeah, have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for watching.